Hello there. My name is Paul Haswell and I'm Head of Technology, Media and Telecoms here at Pinsent Masons in Hong Kong. Now I want to talk to you about Hong Kong's data privacy laws. You'll be familiar with the GDPR, probably the biggest data privacy shakeup in the last few years. It was big news last year, the year before, and continues to be. We've seen some massive fines levied for data breaches, potentially catastrophic, with percentages of turnover for companies being lost just due to the fact they didn't properly take care of individuals' personal data. Now, Hong Kong's data privacy law is somewhat different. I would say, to be perfectly honest, that it is a complete joke. It is not fit for purpose. Now, that's no fault of the law itself, it's just the law is a little bit old. It came around back in 1996, and think how much technology was around in 1996. There was no Facebook, personal data was not being collected anywhere near at the levels it is now, and it wasn't necessarily being collected online. You remember you'd fill in a questionnaire on a piece of paper and post it in, and that was the only way someone could build a database about your information. Now the world is very, very different, and we've some, seen some massive large-scale data breaches all over the world. But what happens if there's a data breach in Hong Kong? What are the repercussions? If you have your personal data lost, as many people did just a few years ago when a major airline suffered a catastrophic data breach, what is your recourse to justice? What are the potential fines that people losing your data could face? Well, unfortunately, the fines are very, very low indeed. And the fact is, the person who's lost your data does not even have to tell you. In my view, as I said, the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance, which is Hong Kong's law, is not fit for purpose. Now we've got some good news. There's finally, much overdue, going to be an amendment to the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance. It's going to be a radical, radical change. They're going to change the entire structure of it, bring it more in line with essentially the GDPR, but also laws across the world. There's also going to be one or two things that are very unique to Hong Kong. Hong Kong has faced some terrible things in the last few months involving doxing, which is when a person's personal information is maliciously posted online. And what is unique in our potential new law is that we're trying to deal with that as well. Now I'm going to hand you over to Thomas Ho, one of my team, who's going to tell you all about the things we're most excited about. Now remember, PDPO is the quicker way to say personal data privacy ordinance. We're going to say that from now on to avoid me doing too many tongue twisters. Over to Thomas. On the 20th of January, the Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Bureau submitted a discussion paper to our Legislative Council setting up proposed changes and updates to the PDPO. What are these proposed changes and updates? Well, there's a number of them, but there are six that we think are particularly relevant. Number one, mandatory data breach notifications. At present, under the PDPO, you do not strictly have an obligation to report breaches to either the regulator or the people affected. However, this is proposed to be changed for such notifications to be mandatory within a certain period of time. Number two, data retention periods. It is proposed that data subjects must be clearly notified how long the data is kept for or retained for. This is obviously very useful because the longer you retain data for and the more data you retain, the more likely it is there will be a breach. Number three, tougher sanctions. At present, in most circumstances, but not all of them, in most of them, under the PDPO, fines tend to cap out at around 100,000 Hong Kong dollars. This is the case, for example, if you don't provide a privacy policy and then breach the data protection principles. Before you incur that fine, what happens is you get an enforcement notice, which you have a period of time to comply with first. The new updates proposed to change this, to peg sanctions to the turnover of a company, which obviously can be much higher and is quite similar to the GDPR and also to do away with the need to first send an enforcement notice. Number four, data processors. A data processor is someone who processes data on behalf of another person. So for example, if you outsource your HR functions to a third party company, that company could be construed as your data processors. At the moment, there is no rule on how these processes operate, except that you must have contractual measures to limit your risk. However, with the new updates, it's quite likely that we will see direct regulation of data processes and what they do. Number five, changing the definition of personal data. Instead of only relating to an identified person, they shall refer instead to an identifiable person. So this really refers to the potential of identifying a person from discrete pieces of data, which perhaps under the old definition would not have been considered personal data. 
And this really relates to some of the technological changes we've seen, for example, in data analytics, in big data, where we can piece together information and get conclusions and identify people. Number six, anti-doxing measures. Because unhappily in Hong Kong, we've seen some doxing incidents in recent months. And with these measures, it's intended that there will be greater penalties for doxing to try and stop this from happening. Of course, a very important matter, not just for Hong Kong, but for all jurisdictions. So those are just some of the proposed changes to the PDPO. Now, I'd be interested to know what you think. Are they long overdue? Do you, are you like me, you think the existing law doesn't really work and we do need these change? Or are you worried about them? There's a lot of moving parts in Hong Kong law generally and in terms of Hong Kong data protection law, how it works compared with other jurisdictions. Asia is a very big place. Everywhere has a slightly different data privacy law. And perhaps Hong Kong will become one of the more rigid following the move of the GDPR. Now, what should you do? Should you be worried? If you're an international business and you've been following the GDPR, then potentially no. The rules essentially will just be a replication of what you're already dealing with the, with the GDPR. I don't think there's anything to be too excited about, nothing to be too worried about. However, if you've been living purely complying with the Hong Kong law, where the fact that you don't even have to report a data breach, where you know that the only penalty you might get is an enforcement notice, if that suddenly switches and you have mandatory reporting within a number of hours, say 72 hours, if you find that your fines could be a percentage of your global turnover, as we see in the GDPR, then there is a lot to worry about. Personally, I'm very excited, not just because it means more work for lawyers, but because Frankly, as I said, this law doesn't work as it currently stands. It needs the change. Companies need to know what they can and can't do with our data, and individuals need to feel their data is secure. But I would be grateful for your feedback. Please do get in touch, and I look forward to hearing from you.